I'm proud to announce that my newest tool invention, the Advanced Folding Tool, is now out by Hillmore. And so I've been thinking about the problems that this tool is going to solve for years, ever since I started in the field. And so you're going to be able to make plenums, make plenum end caps, and also make ductwork end caps without the use of any slide, slip, and S-lock. And so this differs from the standard folding tool that we've been using for years. And I'm going to be showing you all the methods for bending with this tool. And if you have an idea or invention and you want to work with Hillmore and Diversitech, make sure to head over to the Diversitech website and you can submit your ideas in the Trade Invent platform. One of the first problems I identified out in the field was how to make a plenum end cap without having a sheet metal break and without having S-lock in order to seal it. Plus, S-lock's gonna leak a lot of air. And so this tool right here is gonna be capable of helping us make that nice sealed end cap. So first, I wanna show you what the sheet metal dimensions are that we're gonna need for the end cap. And so this is 18 and 3 8 right here is 18 and a half light. So we're measuring the inside dimensions of our box. This one's 18 and a quarter heavy, 18 and a half light. So we take those four dimensions and the shortest one was 18 and a quarter heavy. We're gonna go a little bit smaller than that. So 18 and a quarter plus we're gonna need one inch on all sides. And so it's gonna be a 20 and a quarter by 20 and a quarter inch piece of metal. So we've cut out our end cap and we've used our long tin snips for that. And I just wanna show you these measurements. So it's 20 and a quarter to the outside and from the inside, it's 18 and a quarter. And same thing this way. It's 18 and a quarter. And so that dimension 20 and a quarter. So. Anyway, uh, the next thing that we're gonna need to do uh, before using our tool here is we're gonna need to make our bends in the metal right here. They're called cross breaks. And so when the air pressurizes the duct, the object is for the sheet metal to not make a popping noise. To do that, we can use our Hillmore pocket break. And so this is one way of making cross breaks. And so we're gonna go from inside corner to inside corner. It's gonna hold this down. And you wanna make sure there's cardboard underneath of it as well. Basically, you want the metal to be able to flex, so you can't just do it on a regular table. So there's our cross breaks. Another easy way to do it is to basically take your folding tool, and then you want to just get underneath of it. You're going to push down real hard, and you kind of, kind of bend up a little at a time. And so that's another way of making those cross breaks. So both of these sides are half inch, so it's going to work perfect for our one inch. So I'll show you how that's done. And so you know, the point of the end cap is right here in the middle, and that's why you see it tilting. That's because of the cross breaks. We're gonna be bending inwards for our first bend using our smaller mouth section right here. Now this is 26 gauge metal, so you could use 26 gauge, 28 gauge, 30 gauge. So this would probably be the heaviest metal that you would be working with. 28 and 30 are, are lighter. Now we're gonna flip this over. Now you see that we can see the metal in here and in here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're just going to fold this over now. Now we're gonna open this up a little bit on the corners. So this is referred to as a snap lock punch. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna seal up these corners by squeezing them. So there's your plenum end cap. Now to make a folded over hem where you're gonna be mounting this plenum to the furnace or evaporator coil, you could use either your 3 8 or your half inch. Um, so the half inch will be on the new folding tool. But for this case, we're gonna use the 3 8 on the older style and then we're going to use this mouth to bend it over. You wanna account for the bend radius right here. So that's why we're using the 3 8 And we just simply slip that over, look right here at the metal, and there we are. That'll give us a nice clean surface for mounting to the unit without anybody getting cut or anything like that right here. You could also just fold it over some more as well. 
And so we're continually using handbrakes all the time, anytime we're doing sheet metal work. Here's a three inch offset version and here's a six inch version. So basically we would just do this for all four sides in order to mount it to the furnace, evaporator coil, or the air handler. In this version of a one piece plenum, uh, basically this one is only notched for half inch. And so if you want to just use your half inch side in order to just bend that out, you can do that. It's just gonna fall right down into that spot. You can see the sheet metal on the ends. And you can fold it over just like that and do that on all four sides. And so this is just a simpler way in order to mount it to the evaporator coil furnace or air handler. If you have a cut section of rectangular duct, why would you end up cutting this clinch out and cutting an inch in here, 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 and here, and folding these ears out like on this piece of duct right here in order to then end up having to still need S-lock? So with this duct, we're just gonna make an end cap instead. And you have to make an end cap anyway, so we'll make one that we can actually just uh, attach right on here without any S-lock. So just like we did with the uh, plenum end cap. So this is 13 and three quarters heavy. And we're also gonna take a measurement from this little clinch on the inside here, 13 and three quarters heavy. And this right here is eight and eighth heavy, eight and eighth heavy. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go add two inches to it. So we'll go 10 inches and we'll go just a little bit smaller. So we'll go about like 10 inches heavy. And that's a heavy is just 1 16th of an inch. And then in reference to over here, you see 13 and three quarters heavy. We're just gonna add two inches, go a little bit later. So we're gonna go 15 and three quarters. So that'll add one inch on all sides so that we can make our bends. So here you see we have 15 and three quarters. In this direction, we've got 10 inch heavy. And this is gonna be one inch cut out of the the edge here. So we need to do that for all four sides. So I have this scribed on the sheet metal so I can see it. Now we certainly could have used our pocket brake if we left the cardboard underneath of it. But in this case, I'm just gonna use a piece of plywood with a nice crisp edge on it. And I'm gonna put the weight of my body on it and then I'm just gonna fold it up. And that's how we're gonna make our cross breaks. Knee pads are nice, you know, we would typically be using knee pads when we're doing this a lot. We're gonna bend all these in with our 3 8 inch side right here. We could also just do this with our half inch. Now we're gonna use our advanced folding tool here. We just flip it upside down in order to use it. You see it fits right in there. Should be ready to go. The only other thing that we would do is open up these seams on the corners to make it real easy for when we're mounting this onto the duct. It's already pretty open and we clinch it down with the, the handbrakes after we connect it onto the duct and after we snap lock punch it. So then we can add our end cap here Here we have a lower plenum on a unit that's already mounted. And so basically we're trying to cut this section out in order to mount a 14 by 10 inch piece of duct to the side. So the very first thing that we would do is we would be trying to bend these out. And so we would take our 3 8 section right here. We're gonna fold that over. I like to always just crimp it. It ends up like making this seam right here really nice. Then we can take the large mouth on the advanced folding tool. We can set that right over it. And we can bend that out. So it's ready to go. So that keeps this line real nice and straight. Otherwise, you'd have to take your handbrakes and crimp it at the exact half inch mark. So these are quarter, half inch, three quarters, and one inch. And then you have an inch and a quarter all the way. You'd have to bend it a little at a time in order to try to have this nice straight bend. 
Then in reference to the bottom section right here, we would just take that in there and fold that over. So our final measurements are 14 right here if we're measuring right on the edge. And this is 10. So we're ready to accept our duct. You see that there's no S-lock here and this joint is sealed up really well. It's made with a modified Pittsburgh lock, which we're going to make on our next plenum using our advanced folding tool. You see this corner is sealed up real nice and tight and it doesn't require any S-lock. And so we're gonna be making this modified Pittsburgh lock using our advanced folding tool on a new piece of metal to make a plenum. Here we have a 16 by 13 one piece plenum. And so to do this with our advanced folding tool, we're gonna have an extra inch and five eighths over on this side. And so over on this side, we're gonna have an extra half an inch. So on this plenum, it's gonna go half inch, 16 inch, 13 inch, 16 inch, 13 inch, and an inch and five eighths. After we bend this all out with our advanced folding tool, we'll go ahead and do our cross breaks, and then we'll also do our 90 degree bends. We're first gonna use our standard folding tool on the one inch side, and we're gonna fold that inward towards what will be the inside of the plenum. Remember this is 26 gauge sheet metal presently, and you could use 28 or 30 inch. Now we're gonna flip it over. And here we're gonna use the large gap on the advanced folding tool. So we wanna make sure to be able to see it right there and right there. And this time we're folding it over and you're going to see that extra piece of metal come out so you can't push down real hard until that comes out now you can just come right along it so that's that's the gap where you're going to slip in the other half inch piece in order to connect in and then this just gets hit over just like a a normal pittsburgh seam So I hope this video helped. And if you're looking for this tool, we have links to it down in the description section below. And if you want to learn more about HVAC, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, and also our inverter mini split operation and service procedures book. We also have a bunch of articles, quick tips, calculators, and quizzes over at our website at acservicetech.com. And these books are also available on our website and on Amazon. So hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.